All right, everyone, welcome to episode two of Strategy Talk. We are discussing today if replacing Deathmatch with Empire Wars is beneficial for the game. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thanks to Abductic Platypus and Onlu for being here today. Really appreciate it. And um, based on feedback that we, I got online, um, it's not the, 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 the point of the show is not about winning. It's about a knowledge exchange. It's about us learning from, you know, people who have spent a lot of years thinking and talking about the game. And at the end of the day, if everything is done correctly, us, the viewers at home, should be the winners. And with that, we're going to get into our first topic, which is, is replacing that match with Empire Wars beneficial? And before we do that, uh, we just get some quick introductions from both participants. Uh, let's start with um, Abducted Platypus. If you could just introduce yourself, let the chat know who you are. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm uh, AP, or at least people call me AP. I'm a the Associated Press. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, live in the Netherlands. But, um, I'm most known for um, Capture Age. I do the design, the UX design on Capture Age. Um, so I decide where everything goes on Capture Age and why things should be displayed the way they are displayed or not. But that's a different topic. Let's not discuss that. And um, some, from time to time, I do graphical design as well. I made the Capture Age skin for um, Hidden Cup 4, also 3. Um, and I, I help here, out here, here and there. For example, I did some background work on Tuples 2. For my uh, work besides Capture Age, I do a machine learning. I, I apply machine learning on Age of Empires as a student, which you'll hopefully hear, hear more about in the near future. I hope so. That's uh, kind of cool, I think. Um, anything else that's noteworthy? Yeah, I think I have about 10 years of professional experience in game development, more generally, um, besides studying, of course. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Platypus. So, okay, mm -hmm. what do we do? We call you AP. Do I say the whole thing out? Do I say yeah, Platypus? Or uh, I AP. Dr. Everyone calls me AP. Okay, so we're calling you AP. All right. AP. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And um, yeah. Onlu, if you just um, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, hi. Thanks for having me. Um, I am Onlu, and I've been casting, uh, mostly, mostly doing casting. I kind of do everything here and there. Uh, but been doing that for like three and a half years or so, and I've been casting pretty much every major tournament I can. Uh, I also do YouTube, also have loud cars outside my window. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been at the last three LAN events, uh, NAC3, ECL, and NAC2. Uh, yeah, cast all the stuff. I do YouTube, a lot of campaign sort of things. I also do like the Reddit Civ matchup discussions and I hosted a tournament last year, Horn Lose Big Nomad Cup. And uh, yeah, I do the stuff and the things. Yeah, that's very nice. Well, I uh, thank both of you for coming out. Um, so uh, AP, if you would give us your, mm -hmm. you know, your opening, your point of view on the, the yeah. topic. Okay, so um... I'm going to argue for replacing Deathmatch with uh, Empire Wars. Although I think we should view them as two separate things where we can. I yeah. think removing Deathmatch from the letter is um, is one thing. And the other thing is why why is it beneficial to, to add Empire Wars there? Um, so why is removing Deathmatch beneficial? Um, Empire, sorry, but Deathmatch has about... 1,200 active people, according to AOE2.net, which if you want to have a ladder, that means that you will not have proper matchups because people will not be playing at the same time um, that have a similar ELO and you will get unbalanced matches, which in practice is also, I believe, I don't play that often, what happens. Um, that means, I think, that there is at least something they need to solve for, with regard to that. Uh, the, the letter, the, the, the matchmaking specifically, not necessarily the letter, the matchmaking should be fixed. Um, and therefore, removing it uh, from uh, from the from the main letter that they have, I think, is, is, is good for Deathmatch itself as well, not just for Age of Empires as a whole, which I think is also the case, um, but also beneficial for the Deathmatch community 
uh, in general over time right and i'm not going to say the solution that they propose right now is the, the final solution and it's also not what they said they said what we're going to do is a test we're going to test is it worth removing death match um so I, I can go on on that topic in a bit but let's first talk about adding ben, uh, empire wars to the letter instead uh, why is that beneficial um, i think that's beneficial for uh seeing if there is more people that are interesting interested in um in, in, in empire wars as a ranked mode um that, that they don't they don't they do have some data like right now empire wars is on quick play which means they, they know how many people play it well i played a match yesterday i'm going to say it's not the fastest queue ever but they want to see if there's going to be an improvement when you add it to the uh, matchmaking system uh, in addition to that um there is there, uh, I don't have numbers, but there is people who are asking for a matchmaking system for Empire Wars. I think one of the reasons is because people want to train for uh, the big tournament that's been announced recently. Um, I know that a lot of people will not like the fact that I did it because of Red Bull, and it's not the pure only reason, I'm reasonably sure. But this means that this is the time to announce that because people will be interacting with it right now and to see if Empire Wars in, indeed is worth checking out on, on a matchmaking system is about now because now you can get some impact on the amount of people that are, that are going to uh, test it out. So I think testing out is a key word in this entire thing. Also for Deathmatch, you're going to test out what are the Deathmatch community going to do when they no longer have a, a letter or a matchmaking system. So the, the deathmatch uh, matchmaking, obviously, as I said, it doesn't work as intended. So we would have to find ways to still have a letter. I think that a, having a letter is very beneficial for deathmatch. Um, and, and then to, to see how, how the community itself solves that, they gotta basically remove the tools that they currently have and have them solve that problem for now. And as you may have realized, a lot of people are very annoyed by the fact that it's been removed. And there are, and that's very, uh, very, 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 what would you call it in English? Commendable, that they are actively solving it. And I believe they're gonna, that's what I read on Twitter by Brizolin. They are commendable, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they are actively looking for ways to to improve the community, the deathmatch community around it. And uh, the, the base on that, Microsoft, I, I'm reasonably sure they have all the data, right? They know exactly how people interact with the game. They're going to make a solution that's going to gonna be the, the, a better fit for deathmatch players than the current matchmaking system. I think that's uh, where I will end my opening. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thank you, AP. You gave you gave us um, a good bit of points there for us to you know mull over. Um, now, Anlu, uh, take it away. So I guess I'm technically on the whatever the opposite of affirmative is, the anti side. <laughs> but I I do think that there, AP is right that there needs to be like some layers to this because I don't think that the deathmatch ladder as it exists right now is a good thing. Nor do I think that Empire Wars being added is a bad thing, but it's the way that this was handled and the fact that you are completely removing something without giving something back, I guess. So I guess in general, yes, um, despite what the, uh, the lack of y-axis on the graph uh, did not tell us, uh, which I think is a little sus, especially when you're using it as evidence. Um, Okay, so you have this huge deathmatch tournament, you know, quite a lot of viewers compared to what deathmatch normally gets. It's always been a very small part of the community, but I don't think that means that the needs and wants of that particular community are irrelevant. Like, just because you're a small minority doesn't mean that you don't deserve representation or a platform in which to compete in some sort of reasonable way. Now... Yes, I think it's quite clear. I think I've tried queuing up for DM like once or twice. Um, I guess full full disclosure, I'm not really a DM player. Uh, I mean, I've cast uh, you know a bunch of DM tournaments, but just because it's not like super popular doesn't mean that there isn't a way 
to encourage people to play it. So what I mean by this is, okay, back in Vubly, you had specific ladders for different um, game modes. And yes, here we have a, a two ladders for Deathmatch 1v1 and Deathmatch team game, but there still isn't that much of an incentive to really find good Deathmatch games or play them. I mean, it's the same issue that Quick Play has, where, okay, you might want to queue up for a game of Deathmatch, but nobody is online for Deathmatch, so you just stop queuing for Deathmatch. So it's kind of like you get even fewer people queuing up for it over time. I think that what you need to do at that point is just let it go to lobbies. It's the same thing that you need to do for RM team games at higher levels because it's that's like completely pointless to have a, a ranked queue. I think that they, in general, they need to really probably merge like quick play and ranked into like, okay, this is for people who really want, just want to want to find a good ranked game and let the more specific communities have ranked games in lobbies. Like, yeah, okay, then your internet points might not be as legitimate because you can like, you know, fix games or whatever, but it's not like it's for any money or anything. And I feel like especially coming off of the, the tail end of a huge deathmatch tournament, right when you have people who are now interested in deathmatch that were not interested in deathmatch before, that is a really, really bad thing. And the fact that you're not giving them anything, like sure you can say, okay, we're testing stuff, but that doesn't help people right now, especially as they're just trying to get into DM. Now, speaking to Empire Wars, I honestly think that it's good that we're testing that out. I think that this is the correct time to do it, although the optics are still kind of bad because it just looks like, okay, we're, we're doing this because Red Bull's doing this. I also think it's somewhat... I don't know, like, I'm not the biggest fan of... Okay, Red Bull is, like, the only non-streamer organized tournament right now, and so it kind of makes it seem like Empire Wars is, like, the game mode, as it's probably the tournament that's most likely to reach an audience that is not already an Age of Empires fan. Um, I mean, maybe T90 could still do that a little bit more, but it, it's pretty close. Um, but, you know, a lot of people being brought into the game via Empire Wars, and I think that, okay, you can test it out, but just don't do it at the expense of something that exists, and it's been around for a long time. Okay, um, uh, well, thank you, Onlu, for your contribution as well. Um, okay, so I mean, we're gonna just go into a more like open format from this point. So, um, AP, is there anything in, in um, on this presentation um, that you wanted to directly respond to? Um, there's a few things. Um, the, I'm not sure they're gonna be directly, but I think they are very related to what, what you said. Uh, I would like to point out. Um, I, I mean, maybe Ornu agrees, but I, I think one important thing to note is that the low effort thing they are doing right now, because that's what it is, could actually be a good sign because they're, I think it might not even require a game update. It's just them flipping a switch on their servers. So that means that they don't want to invest a lot of resources into a final solution yet, which means that they're really looking into how to solve this properly. Like the reason, one of the most, most common things I've read is that people are suggesting to have a, um, a 1v1 and a deathmatch and a 1v1 empire wars rather but i think right now you would need to make an update to the ui which means they have to uh, allocate a developer to update the ui and they probably have to make some changes in the server and side etc all, all those technical things um so they might come they might agree yeah, yes we can do that and they might do that on the other hand i think one of the things they're trying to achieve is to reduce the amount of split that you have if there's going to be three uh because the main sorry, the main entry point is going to be your uh ranked ranked ui on in the game where you can select rm dm and then maybe also empire wars so wouldn't you split up the community um, more because then it means that the people that are queuing for dm might also queue for empire wars i don't want to say that's true because i don't think they're that related to the game modes but not at all <laughs> <laughs> um and, and similar between RM and, and, and Empire Wars. Um, so that means that people might not really know what to do, like especially new people, like how do I queue for this? And that means that queue times generally will go up. Um, this which could also be the reason why I want to test out Empire Wars because people are more likely to queue for both RM and Empire Wars at the same time. Um, 
which could then lead to uh, shorter uh, queue times overall for both of those modes compared to what we had with them deathmatch and and rm at the same time which i'm not going to say that's a, be a good reason for them to do it but it's definitely something they will keep in, in mind um and i think i will repeat what i said i think that they were going to look for a different solution for deathmatch um that's one point i wanted to make um yeah maybe one the ones to respond to yeah. that so yeah uh, Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, you wanted to respond directly to him right now? You go ahead. I was just going to recap yeah, what man. he said earlier. Oh, yeah, you go. Take it off. off of um, I, I think that you can be right that, okay, they just want a, a short-term, low-effort fix, but we don't see that as a community. <laughs> All we see is low-effort, because this is very clearly low-effort, and we also see no communication like yeah there is very little communication that ever comes from microsoft on anything and everything looks like an arbitrary decision that was made by like marketing people and not by people who actually know anything about age of empires and that isn't necessarily the case but that's what it looks like and i think it's understandable that people get really upset especially when you're not even told hey don't worry deathmatch guys here is something that we have in the works even if it's not ready yet, I think that would go a really long way in terms of making the making people feel like they aren't just like completely forgotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I agree with your. Is it, can I respond to this? <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. Uh... <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So I I agree. It, it, sorry, the, the the way they communicated this was could have been better, especially the timing, right? As you mentioned uh, in your main. I think the timing was a bit awkward. I understand it. You do as well, I believe. Um, but also, like the, the more general communication, is they basically give us numbers. Uh, this is why we do it, but they don't, like you say, uh, give them an outlook. And I think that's because they just don't know what they want to do. They want to do this, as I, uh, which is also one of the reasons what I said earlier. They want to do this to see how is a deathmatch community gonna uh, respond to this. So uh, today make their own matchmaking system. And I'm also uh, admin on the Siege Engineers Discord, which is where all the modders are. And people have been talking about making a new matchmaking system outside of the game, purely for, for helping the deathmatch people. And maybe they will find a solution there that could be interesting to then also end up in the game. Yeah. So Pretty what... similar to what happened to Capture Age, right? Uh, um, you want to say something? Yeah, sorry. Uh... So on Lu, I wanted to I just more specifically about um like how much uh, on disagreement are you with like removing DM out of the rank ladder like completely? Like I would you say like um you're like completely against it and you would want to see a end result where DM stays on that on that ladder? I think that it's complicated. <laughs> um I think that <laughs> I would never argue that Deathmatch ranked ladder as it exists right now is a good thing, but I think that it's even worse to re to take it away without replacing it with anything. I guess that's how I would say it. Um, well, when you say replace it with anything, uh, well, they are replacing with Empire Wars. Um, do you mean... But not, they're what's... not Deathmatch. Like, it's like, okay, here's uh, your Land Nomad, you know, Diplo games. Okay, we're going to go ahead and replace that with uh i don't know random 2v2 on arabia okay. <laughs> like... okay i see what you mean um do you have any specific um like what would a um a reasonable replacement for dm be in your in your opinion well oh, i don't well, know maybe you haven't brainstormed before but i want to ask there, there is know. there is nothing like deathmatch other than deathmatch and it's always going to be niche but that doesn't mean that it doesn't deserve to have a ladder that's in the game. And like, I know NC Zone, like they've always had their own ladder system and you can you can do stuff, more stuff outside of the game, but why on earth should we have to do this as a community? Don't we, isn't this game published by like the second or third largest tech company in the world? Don't they have the resources to uh, do this? Yeah. And um, yeah. so AP, in relation to what Onlu just said, mm -hmm. um, 
from your perspective in terms of like just defending an implementation of Empire mm-hmm. Wars. So the upper the opposition to that is well, even if it may make a bit more financial sense to implement Empire Wars, there's still a sort of like cultural hunger for that match, you mm-hmm. know, given its place yeah. in the community. Um, what would you say to kind of I don't know push back or or maybe give a a dissent to keeping it for the culture, even though it may not like pull in money the way Microsoft might need to pull in money. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're right. Like most of the things that Microsoft will be doing is indeed going to be because it, it will earn them money in one way or another. That's and that right now that's I believe purely by selling the game and its DLCs. I don't think they have any other revenue money thing. And you, you can say like like Omnus says. They're a big company, but they really want Age of Empires or the franchise, I think as a whole, maybe, to be um, uh, self-supporting support, in terms of revenue. So the, then the question, indeed, like you say, becomes why would you want to, to well, what, what could they do to keep Deathmatch around? I, I think they do understand that um, the variety in game modes, like they added, what's it called? Um, Battle Royale, right? I don't right. think many people play that either, but they do understand that there is a lot, there's a need for people to have some variety in the game so they will interact longer with the game. So there's definitely going to be some incentive for Microsoft to keep supporting modes such as Deathmatch, not not purely to, to, to support the nostalgia, but also for newer people to, to have a larger variety in the game. Um, the question becomes, um, do you want to is, is there then a need for a letter for these people um because that is ultimately what they're removing here right they're not removing that much completely they're removing their ability to have a letter and their ability to have simple easy matchmaking um and i think that there it, there is less incentive for sure and i think there could still be some incentive because there is still some some um visibility of this game mode in the community, in the, in the visible community. So if you would be looking online for Age of Empires esports, for example, then you will not find it instantly, but you will definitely find some presence from Deathmatch. And that presence, like they're actively investing in esports. You're not, no longer investing in Deathmatch esports, but you are investing there purely to, to drive more new people towards um, uh, the game. So and then they will they'll change the strategy, not from investing into these tournaments, but they will can yeah. still invest into having a high quality for Deathmatch itself. Um, well, um, so AP, um, thanks. Yeah. So thanks for that contribution. But based on uh, what yeah, okay. you just said, I did have a question yeah. here for Anu. Okay. Um, so Anu, so while we understand like um, the meaning of DM to the community. Um, it does beg the question of like where does Microsoft as you know as a developer and as a company draw the line of you know making changes to the game that will draw in like a larger audience through esports initiatives versus uh, just sort of you know doing what's comfortable for like the existing audience like where do you see um in relation to this recent change, the line being drawn there, or, sh- or or do you think like there's like some philosophy that they should be looking that into that they're not currently doing now? I feel like in general, yes, you want Age of Empires to make money because then that way we get more tournaments and the more updates and more content and all that stuff. But in no way should DE be a step back from what the community has been able to put together with like zero resources whatsoever. Like this speaks to like the whole lobby system being as bad as it is in DE because it's really easy to just look at Voobly and be like, this is way better. And I feel like if you are not at least giving people what they were able to experience without Microsoft doing anything, like my, the Microsoft doing something should not be worse than the Microsoft not doing anything. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So now, AP, I don't really necessarily want to bring you too far off of the the topic because I know you're just here to defend implementing <laughs> Empire Wars. You're not necessarily here to yeah. like just sort of bad for Microsoft. 
but if in mm. any way um, you could just kind of reply to what Onlu said just in terms of, you know, that idea that when Microsoft implements a change, it should be an improvement of the game past what the community teams themselves are able to do. Um, would you yeah. would you say in your opinion that maybe, um, I don't know, maybe you see like maybe the players and maybe the community isn't thinking like, three four steps ahead and like you know if you just mm. kind of broaden the scope like this is one move but do you see like several mm. moves being done and you just have like you think we should just have a bit more faith or anything along those lines so you, i want to show you want me to explain why we should have faith in microsoft <laughs> yeah <laughs> why why we should have faith in this move which is just it's one move but it yeah. could just be the only thing they yeah. do or it could be yeah. connected to a broader platform yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah no um so in in the past, I think Microsoft has shown, although not everyone seems to agree, but I think I think so that um, they have supported deathmatch as well. Like they have uh, up, they disconnected their map pool from the RM map pool, and more more generally, I, they have like I, I don't want to use my own example, but Capture Age has become a part of the game now. Well, it's it, it's on the website; it's not be a part of the game. Um, so you have a tab. <laughs> We have a tab. We have a tab. <laughs> um, that, that so they do do care about what the community wants. Of course, if what what Ornlu has also said is that do they then want us to invent new things for their for their community? And I think to some extent the answer is yes. I mean, maybe we want it to be yes because the community knows best what they want, right? We invented Capture Age because we thought it could make expectating but more interesting and i think we achieved that goal as well like i think people like capture age and i think something similar uh well, actually i think it also happens with nc and c zone like you said a lot of people are still interacting with that system because it's, it's better um now it's up to microsoft to assume or to, to assume to to realize that that is indeed uh something they want to have in the game and they would then invest in that um could microsoft have come up with all these things themselves um I think so to some extent, but they 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 have they need some information from the community what they want, and there, it needs to be ways to figure that out. And then I'll come back to my original point for why they did this with VM and why they're doing it with Empire Wars. Why are they adding Empire Wars to the queue to see how we how we interact with these these changes they made? Um, and you can give them feedback, right? I think there is. Uh, 500 comments on Reddit about the changes that we what, that they announced for for this. So I think they are listening. I in fact know they are listening because it will popped up in the deathmatch discord and it said, hey, I'm here. I'm not going to interact with you guys, but I am going to listen. I'm going to read everything you guys said. So I think they're really taking this very seriously. Yeah. Um, to do this. Is uh, that, does it answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah that's, it touches on. I mean, as best as you can without someone like a spokesperson yeah. from Microsoft, right? Which is what we try to accomplish here today. Um, so, Anlu, yeah. I had um, the sort of like, so um, so AP in his initial opening, he mentioned that, um, you know, Red Bull taking up um, Empire Wars as a big step for the game. And even you also acknowledge that, um, you know, uh, M this this uh, Red Bull World Wolo tournament is the, the first non you know it's the first big event that's non-streamer non-community supported and we have to imagine like as a company you know microsoft would take that very seriously because um you know apart from you know selling cosmetics and soundtracks uh, that would be one of the ways in which they may be able to generate um some more um you know funding for the funding for the game to you know continue on development um how how much do you think um empire wars being supported by outside entities other than the community is legitimacy for making these sort of big moves against um a cultural touchstone like dm do you think it's justified at all or do or do you think um well it's a sort of a self fulfilling prophecy right if you invest in empire wars and red bull 
provides a spotlight for Empire Wars, and Empire Wars becomes popular because Red Bull put a spotlight on it. Like, you did that yourself. It's not like, oh, this is just sort of happens to be the case. Like, it's all very specific, right? Okay, so that actually is a... That is a good counterpoint. I want to ask you is, so you believe that they would have been the same buzz even if it was like a Red Bull, Wololo, DM thought of it? I think that Empire Wars, like on a personal level, I enjoy Empire Wars more than Deathmatch. And it probably has a broader appeal. But if it was Red Bull, Wololo, random map tournament, I think that Empire Wars is zero in popularity because it has no existing community and it right. was just made for de like look at battle royale like no one plays battle royale yeah. okay um so ap that um that brings us to an interesting point like look at battle royale um should microsoft be taking these big swings on i mean they spent a lot of time developing the battle royale game mode um mm -hmm. and it didn't turn out anywhere and for all we know like this empire wars ladder could be I don't want to say a waste, a community waste of time, but it could be another product that doesn't pan out as well as we we may have wanted to. So, what what do you say to that? Hmm. Uh, specifically to um, the battle royale. No, no, just to the um, idea of okay. um, implementing these things that you know may okay. seemingly just go nowhere mm. at the expense okay. of of other things that the community uh, so, wants. So, so you honestly don't want to hear what I'm gonna say, it anyways. <laughs> is <laughs> is because you can market it easy. Yeah, we have a new game mode. Come play Age of Empires. It's awesome with this new game mode. We have we have, we have renewed the game, and it's also and, and, and well, you have all those things, you know. Um, so, um, does it attract people to buy the game? I assume they they got their worth of, of their investment money out of announcing this new game mode. They did that. Um, uh, show match on which we even made a custom overlay with capture H. So we we actually thought as capture H, a lot of people would play it. Um, I think specifically why um, Battle Royale actually failed is because the performance is not that good. It still isn't. Um, so I think it could have could have indeed had that impact. But more generally, um, adding these new things, there is always going to be a chance it's going to be successful. There's always going to be a chance it will fail. Right? Uh, it's very hard to predict that. You, only geniuses can probably make some guess about that. Um, so, is it worth investing time in doing that? I I think so. Yeah, I think there is some some worth that. Yes, there's a chance that it becomes interesting. But also, I I've played some Empire Wars and I've played some some Battle Royale and I've played basically any game mode, uh, in, in, including Deathmatch, of course. But it's not a new new game mode. Um, and that does keep me engaged. Like it spends, I will spend a full day, full playing day, so it's like four hours on engaging with this new game mode. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's worth for them to do that. Um, but that doesn't need to be promoted to a matchmaking system. It's probably going to be a follow-up question. Yeah, I think the reason for that is indeed because they are sponsoring it in a tournament, um, even though. I think specifically for Empire Wars was designed for competitive play. Um, and I think the reason why, like, like Orno said, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that it's, it's like that. But I do think that Red Bull thought about it very carefully. What are we going to do? Are we going to do Empire Wars? Are we going to do RM? Are we going to do Deathmatch? I think, uh, I'm not even sure what they said publicly about it, but I, I, I think that they reached out to to uh, T90 and and and, and Nilly. So so correct me if I'm wrong. If anyone knows what they have said publicly, um, and they asked them what would be interesting. Yeah, we don't want to do the same thing that everyone does because right. that isn't the strategy of Rebel, right? Rebel never wants to do exactly what other people do. Like they have a League of Legends event, or maybe it's Dota. Sorry, if anyone is same thing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a one v one tournament, right? A one v one uh, MOBA. I don't think it's very, very normal. Is that the word I want to use? Not really, but I don't really have a better word. Um, so, and then Empire Wars is also not normal. And then you can argue why not any of the other other game modes. And I think that's because they, they checked what's already out there. And Deathmatch had a better visibility than Empire Wars. And Empire Wars did look appealing. And, and there's another thing you guys don't want to hear. 
there's a higher chance that the that Viper will play it and, and Hera will play it and all the big streamers that have a lot of influence on that community and will highlight their brand are gonna play it. Unfortunately, it is definitely something that is as a, as a monetary force behind it, right? They're doing this because they expect a higher viewership, which will give them hopefully more sales on their bottles of, uh, of Red Bull or cans of Red Bull, sorry. Okay, well, thank you, AP. Just to respond to the chat, um, no, we're not confirming if P90 or Nelly told Red Bull to do Empire Wars. You know, we were just, he was just thinking out loud. But we don't know that uh, for a fact. We'd have to ask mm -hmm. them individually. Also, on was a nine year League of Legends veteran. I take issue with, with that. that hey, Noda and Lala, the same thing, but you know, neither here nor there. Um, okay, so, uh, Arnold, just to bring the discussion back to you. Um, okay, so first of all, um, I have some questions here. I have, I have like about five questions um, that I got from feedback before the event. Four of them were from Bristolin. Um, so only one person <laughs> gave us some high quality questions that we can go through. And they were all, um, I suppose, um, addressed to AP to respond to. So I, <laughs> I don't really have much questions from the audience for Onlu. Um, so if you all could um, ask them in the Twitch chat or even message me on Discord, I'm sure Onlu would, would love to, you know, represent his side a bit more and, and you know, answer um, community questions. Um, but it's somebody, all right. I'm I... the wolf of the people. They already all agree <laughs> with me. <laughs> so I saw, um, I did see one comment in the Twitch chat from user Ska, Skathic345. And his comment was, removing that match from ladder straight up kills it. Honor, do, you, do you think that's true? Do you, do you believe like just removing this in this way will just completely destroy the DM community or something as less dramatic as that? Uh, at the more casual level, maybe. The higher level DM community wasn't using the ladder anyway. But what I think it kills is it kills any growth potential for DM. Yeah. And I guess... Just in the in the spirit of asking questions, you know, given that as as AP mentioned before, the the low numbers for DM, like how much of a responsibility is it Microsoft to you know try to grow something that even the community hasn't seemed to really picked up on? There's a difference between okay, it's Microsoft's job to like really try and push this game mode, like especially if DM has had plenty of time to, you know, see if it was popular. But there's a difference between that and then just completely removing any sort of place that you can find games easily and compete. I, I Like there's a big difference between that, right? Okay, that's fair. Um, so I do have a, I want to ask a, one of the questions from Bristol and, and, and uh, so let's, first, let's see the question and, and imagine it just be directed to eight people. Let's see. So the first one she asked was, what do you think would have happened to that match game mode if Red Bull Wololo featured the DM game mode instead of Empire Wars? And do you think that Red Bull Wololo having a DM edition and Empire Wars edition could be interesting? I suppose either one of you can pick up that if you... Well, I think the answer is quite... To me, at least, very obvious. Yes, DM would have grown if they would have picked up uh, it over Empire Wars, um, because it will give um, give it a spotlight with uh, many viewers. Um, are the viewer numbers going to be the same? Definitely for the first one. I assume the first one would have given similar numbers as Empire Wars has had given. Um, and then the the, the second question is: um, Could you repeat the second question, please? Um... So, the second question she asks is, um, do you think that Red Bull Wololo having a Deathmatch edition and Empire Wars edition oh, yeah. could be yeah. interesting? Um, it could be interesting, for sure. Um, I, I don't think Red Bull would do it, because I think they want to focus on one thing. They want to make Empire Wars their thing and not Deathmatch and Empire Wars. There is this other thing, which is also marketed under Red Bull, but I think it's a different organization which has been doing some other tournaments. Um, but I think it's not the same, so maybe I shouldn't mention it. Right. Um, but they have, have organized Empire Wars and they have organized uh, a Battle Royale tournament. 
so then maybe maybe they will organize a deathmatch tournament. But I think that's a separate thing. You mean Drakant? I don't think Drakant's organizing a deathmatch tournament. Uh, <laughs> uh, is it Drakant behind that? I don't. I no, no, Drakant sure. did like the uh, the only other battle royale like oh. mini tournament things. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No, I, I think Red Bull did it, but it's, I think it's really focused on a different community than the core Age of Empires community we have on Twitch. So I'm not sure how known it is because. They ask us for a capture H version with the Battle Royale. That's why I know about it. <laughs> so I think that already says enough. Even if they would do it, it's not going to give the, the similar highlight that that match would, would get. And I don't see them doing it. And I'm not sure that the viewers will find it that interesting uh, unless they do it as the show match that they did the other day. Um, the other, well, I think it was the, the second, maybe it was the third one. They had a little show match for a 2v2 Empire Wars between the semifinals and the finals to give the finalist a break um so then it, i think they could consider doing a little deathmatch thing there as well although i think right now i think it, they might consider that a bit too dangerous because it's very heated right i think they also know there's heat from the dm community and if they would do that it might not be perceived as positive so i wouldn't expect it for the red bull four is what we currently at maybe for yep. five if that will happen and um, so we had uh, another question from Bristol in here. So it's a, it's rather long, so I'll have to truncate it. Um, she, well, her argument is basically that uh, Empire Wars only effectively removes Dark Age from random map. Um, is and is that the last bit of the question? Is uh, what does Empire War offer that random map doesn't? Like, what's what's the real offering of Empire War? Now, that is an interesting question, and I think I'll, I'll give AP a break here from having to have all the very tricky points that he has to defend. <laughs> um, Empire Wars is essentially RM, but it's faster and there's a little bit less diversity. In Empire Wars, you are cutting out every single Dark Age bonus that is like mostly effective in Dark Age. I actually think it would be really cool if Empire Wars, like, you start with, what, four or five drop-off sites, and you give Japanese, like, 250 extra wood or something like that to compensate for the bonus that they would have gotten. Because, like, as it stands right now, I would actually think Empire Wars is worse in terms of improving the amount of diversity. It just makes for a... Uh, uh, an easier viewing experience. It's it's faster, right? So it's better for casuals who are like, you know, trying to get into the game. I think, you know, you're the you're the League of Legends veteran. And my <laughs> understanding is that game is not very fast, and it's still pretty darn popular. That's a good point. So I don't even necessarily agree with that, right. but I think that is the logic behind the decision making. Is they they want a, a more attractive version of Age of Empires to a broader audience. Okay. And I think, honestly, here, here's what will be controversial. I think DM suffers a lot from creating very compelling games to watch. Like, I've casted a lot of DM, especially recently. Games can be over in, like, five minutes, and there's a lot of really interesting stuff happening then. Or you can have games that are two hours that make you want to smash your face against the wall because it's the same thing happening over and over again. <laughs> and it removes even more of, like, the different things you have in Age of Empires. But it is a fundamentally different experience, which Empire Wars is not, which I understand. Okay. And so I had another question here from Pecturnus. Hope I pronounced that correctly. As tournament organizers, do you feel disincentivized to invest your energies into Empire War tournaments due to its strong association with Red Bull? Yes, but I don't really count as a tournament organizer <laughs> because I don't uh I don't have the opportunity to sponsor several you know six digit or five digit tournaments uh with prize pools but that's a whole that's a whole other thing okay well i guess the, the uh, amount maybe of people that, can, that can even host tournaments that matter yeah. is uh is very very minimal and i think that the whole tournament scene right now is not incentivized to do anything new which is again it's that's a whole other issue but if i was a tournament organizer organizer i would not want to do empire wars necessarily because red bull is doing it Okay, um, so AP, um, so that's a response mm -hmm. to that. Do you think that that possible perception 
amount, you know, community organizers that, you know, it's kind of like Red Bull's cow. Is that going to harm the development? Oh, I uh, just, uh, before you answer, I just want to... Uh, <laughs> Nelly, just give me a <laughs> yeah. huge raise. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for stopping by, Nelly. Of course, everybody know Nelly was in the first... Um, Strategy Talk debate um, two weeks ago with Mass Mora. That was a very successful event. Um, so in a way, you know, Nelly is very much responsible for helping the series get off the ground. Um, so so back to you, AP. I think the question I was going to ask... Actually, Nelly, it's very interesting that you came at this point because we are discussing <laughs> the topic based around um, tournament organizers. So if you are still here, I'd, I'd like to get a comment from you. So yeah, so the question, AP, AP which is... Let me just remember what the question was um Juan Lu had are said, organizers disincentivized to yeah. host empire wars tournaments because yeah. it's so strongly associated with red bull yeah so that so tournament organizers may not want to touch it as much do you think ap that that may actually be counterproductive to you know microsoft vision possible vision of trying to grow the game through empire wars if now that no nobody else but red bull really wants to work with it um, that's, by the way, wrong. Uh, Litacore in chat is actually organized a 2v2 Empire Wars tournament uh, a year ago, I believe. Um, so I mean, I'm not sure if he wants to organize another one, but I wouldn't be surprised if there will be an Empire Wars duos, I think it's what's called, too. Um, but besides them, uh, I don't really think anyone else has done it. That's correct. I think having a letter will actually help that. If it becomes a popular letter, then more people will start to engage in it. But is it then still uh, an innovative new uh, thing? I'm not sure if it is because it's already been done a lot. So maybe I'm not. This is your question. But I think your question goes a bit beyond that. If you have another innovative uh, idea, like maybe you want to have Dark Age with nine villagers, I think someone suggested on Reddit today. Would people want to try that? I think that having too many different game modes is indeed gonna reduce. The amount of game modes that people want to test out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have another question here from Brisselin, who I will mention once again was the only person to submit <laughs> questions before the event actually started. So if anyone wants to DM me some questions, ask them in the chat, find me on Discord, feel free to do that. Because Onlu is starving for questions out here, man. Right. So the, the third question was um, that so the DM game ladder isn't very active, as we all know. Um, do we think that the Empire Wars ladder will maybe suffer from the same fate? Because as we know, um, you know, the Battle Royale mode didn't kick off of the ground. So do you believe in, in the change from Microsoft that it's actually going to do something? Or do you think it's going to be a DOA situation? Um, it's not going to be that more rival because people will engage in it to just train for Rebel Wallolo and people that watch these streamers, specifically Hera and Viper, who will be engaging with that, are going to more be no more likely to try it out. So it's really, again, a self-fulfilling prophecy, I guess, because yeah. it's bigger, it will grow. It has a higher potential growth. Is it going to be played after Rebel Wallolo? I think it's a more tricky question. It will die out a little, for sure. I think it will at least half, if not, it will be a quarter of what it will be. And I don't think it will be at the, what I think it's 60,000 currently, current active players on the uh, RM ladder for 1v1 or for team games. I think it's very similar. Um, so if this reaches about 20k, then it will be left at 5k maybe afterwards, which I think will still suffer from the same things as Deathmatch has, less so. Um, and it also depends on Red Bull doing these events, Empire Wars events continuously, or someone else like Litercore. I think those are the things that are gonna uh, incentivize people to keep playing Empire Wars. Yeah. And I have a question here from Nerfux in our ground. Nerfux, wait, did I say that correct? Nerfuxing around, something of the sort. Yeah, so he had a question for both participants. Um, do you think removing a feature from the game sets a bad precedent for the future? Wants to answer first? <laughs> uh, okay, I can go for it. <laughs> I don't think that saying anything that's in the game should never be removed. Like, I don't think that's actually a good idea because there is such a thing as AP was, was alluding to that as having too much. 
because then you then you even more seemingly seemingly just focus on the few things that you do know. But I think that this particularly is a bad precedent because you are removing a major it's it's not a minor thing that they're doing, right? Like this is this is quite large. And I think that the the worst precedent rather than removing something is removing it without replacing any sort of equivalent. Uh, AP, do you want to dive into that as well, or prefer I just move on to something? Uh, uh, well, I, I to some extent I agree with Arnold, um, and I think it really depends on the case. Like for for example, um, removing cartography, I believe is what I did. Um, it's actually but, still there. Fun fact: it's just it, a, a uh, hidden technology. Same with tracking; that's still in the game. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Sorry, I know that. The, uh, the AOE two, <laughs> the AOE two nerd has to burst forth from me yeah. at times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know the feeling as a capture H dev. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then again, maybe, maybe you can argue that red, that cartography and tracking, tracking is now research by default, and, and so is yeah. All your so it's not really a replacement on feudal age. Yeah, yeah. So, and in this example, I think is really where they remove it and they tell you to use a feature that they already have. So it's not also being replaced. Um, so, I, I, but I really want to want to think about something that has, has where they have done that this as well by re removing something. They removed some bonuses, I guess, from Civs. Um, uh, I think Zaki actually touches on it. The things that they have removed that have no real replacement are obsidian arrows and Inca villagers. Mm -hmm. And that's those are probably the two biggest ones. Okay. So that's not too often. So I don't I'm gonna say um it's not too bad. I think they do this these things to to balance. And balance is again something you test. If the new meta forms, you alter the meta, you keep testing in uh, I think that is sorry. I don't think it necessarily sets a bad precedent because of that. Then I think it's purely something they want to test. And if you like, if, if we as the more uh, long-term community that was around before the E like that, that's a different question. I think they try to cater the game to a wider audience that doesn't want to have super complicated 100 different technologies. I think even more that you can research every game. They want to have 20 technologies to make the game very easy. Um, so that's why they're I, adding in a bunch of new sieves all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they're adding in more and more incredibly weird uh, gimmicks that don't yeah. make any sense compared yeah. to the rest of AOE, like Flemish <laughs> Revolution and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I do still think that they try generally try to reduce the complexity of the game. Uh, I think a bad, good example is auto scouting, for example. It's very complex to do. You just have a button for it now. It that doesn't perform it as well. But I do still think it influences everyone who plays the game on not just a low level, which you try to cater to, but also on the high level. Um, and I think going back to the topic, removing things is a it's just then testing to make the game a little easier, more accessible. But I don't think it's excessive yet. I don't think it will be soon. I think that's what H4 is going to be for. It. I think that's going to be comparatively much easier. Okay, and um, now I know we touched on this a bit, like in the discussion, um, it's been alluded to, but um, Warp, what is that? Warped Biotic in the Twitch chat asked, um, and a lot, I saw a lot of people um, in the different forums kind of mention this as well. So there's this perception out there, like, um, why is it so hard just to have EW and DM on the ladder? I, I, mean, I know we've, we've, you've kind of both said a bit about why before, but if you just want to like condense an argument as to why not just both? AP's okay. the tech expert when it comes to these things, he can answer. <laughs> <laughs> why not both? Well, like I said, because this is the simple solution they want to test out first. And uh, the other things is splitting the community more. As I think I also mentioned they split, you split the community into more different pools, which will reduce the quality of them for each. Um, not necessarily to a problematic thing, but I think it will, will happen for Deathmatch, and Deathmatch might actually, well, I probably won't be smaller, because I think right now the people that play Deathmatch are already very focused on Deathmatch, but it, it won't 
but it will affect deathmatch will affect for example the people that are gonna queue for empire wars i feel specifically the new people by the way not the people that are inexperienced but the new people that have to make a choice so all right so at this point i do i kind of do want to go into the to the next topic of uh the, talking about nerfs a bit and changes and um, but perhaps you all might use a quick water or bathroom break if anybody needs to i'm good so if he's good all right okay great so it was just me <laughs> but i will i will tell you all <laughs> um all right so let me change the topic here um, all right, so we're going into the next topic, um, which is a broad strategy nerfs better for the game. And this topic, of course, was inspired by the recent nerfs to the Inca, completely removing their Dark Age, sorry, their Feudal Age um, uh, bonuses to their you know armor and attack. And you know this was very this caused a lot of stir and buzz in the community, and. Um, just trying to remember who was on the affirmative for this. Like who agreed? I think AP, you agreed with the, you agreed with the <laughs> one, right? So a, yes. AP is a rabble rouser here today. He's just, he's just, um, he's just Mr. Controversial today. Uh, but you started last <laughs> time, so I don't know. Maybe only you should, you should um, just take it off. Well, you. wait. I think that it's good that it's being removed. But so. there was some way in which you both disagree. Well, we're not. It's not about Incas in particular. You both had disagreements on. I think the the game design philosophy on how to deal with these kind of changes. If I'm remembering the notes, correct. I, th- I, I think we only discussed with the Inca. Yeah, I think we can start there, right? We can start, yeah. we can start and, and go, go start more general. Okay, all right. Well, you know, AP, you could just uh, just give some, just start talking, and we'll figure out. Yeah, I will just start talking. Okay, yeah. so. No, sorry, I'm sorry, Anlu, Anlu, Anlu. Oh, Anlu. Oh, okay, 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 okay. He just started talking, and we will figure out okay. the way into the topic. So, uh, that that's usually my philosophy when it comes to doing any sort of content. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. So, I think taking, yeah, generally speaking, I would say that the argument against removing stuff like Inca villagers or Obsidian arrows is that it makes the game. It makes the civilizations more similar. It removes identity, and it make it pushes every single civilization to do the exact same thing, and that even removes the sort of civ diversity even more because some civs are good at doing the meta stuff better than others. That's why we see Franks and Britons all the time. That said, I think that there is a difference with very like Inca villagers. In some cases, it is overpowered. Oftentimes, it's not. And I think that's where people get frustrated because they're like, this isn't actually the most OP thing in the world. But I actually would argue that it decreases the amount of the amount of strategy that you see with Incas because the entire civilization is boiled down to villager rushing. You see that in like 80% of pro games with Incas. Whenever they pick them in a tournament, it's like, oh, let's play the Civ as like a pocket pick for a strategy that you... You know, it's just that you play the strategy with the sieve and that's all you do. And I joke that the Inca tech tree is just villagers and blacksmith and you don't have anything else. It doesn't matter. (laughs) So I think that removing that is good because one, I don't think villagers fighting is the most exciting thing in the world. Uh, And two, that's that's yeah, it opens it forces players to use Incas as more than just a villager rush sieve. Um, no, AP, I see it not in your head, so I hope you don't have like too much agreement here. Like, you know, um... oh no, I, I just, I just get his point. Like, I understand that 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 is point of view. I, 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 and I recently, as one of us was going to say when I thought I had to start, I, 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 like the day I suggested to 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 talk about this is actually also the day I changed my mind on this. That therefore, uh, I thought it might have been interesting. So, um. The main reason I think why it's, it's worth doing that is besides identity, as you pointed out, and it sh- the identity, I, I agree, is not the most, should not really be the m- main reason why you remove or not remove a certain strategy. Um, but I think the main reason is that you sometimes don't want to play s- Scout Rush or you want, don't want to, open, like, there's only so many openings. And I think Tower Rush, more generally, Tower Rush is one of those openings. And it's very annoying to play against. But I don't think removing that strategy is a solution, but it's rather educating people how to play versus that or giving them more options to play versus towers 
Um, and uh, if, if you want to nerf them, the Inca Rush, because I think it is quite strong, then maybe give them an, a, an extra uh, handicap. For example, instead of uh, moving it to a cost stage, which remove the strategy, maybe have them invest two villagers by idle time, so it will become a technology on your town center, invest uh, in that the tidal time, and then your villagers will be that will be that strong, and then you have two villagers less, and your economy will be punished more so, and that will incentivize people more so to look into other strategies, um, and then you would have to look for other ways to to ner to, to buff it. Uh, Incas, which I think we both agree on. Incas right now, as they are, are not very strong. I think the identity they could give them is that they have a very interesting alternative unit unit to to counter cavalry. I, I guess that's one of the things they could could en emphasize. I think that's the other most more unique thing is um, I keep forgetting the unique name, the name of the unique unit. The Kamayuk. The Kamayuks, I think, are and are one of the. There are not not very many uh, unique units that are are similar to that, and I think they could emphasize that strategy, but I don't think uh, civilization should be based around um, still, because that's what will happen one strategy. I think uh, civilization should have multiple strategies that they can go for to, well, I think it increases the quality. You have to, to understand what the opponent's going to do more, but it will also give you uh, more interesting uh, options in the game as a player. Something that I find interesting and I don't know, maybe if you have some sort of answer to this, AP, because I don't. Mm -hmm. Why were was there very little, like, anger at the removal of old Korean tower rushes? Like, when they would build the towers faster and then it had the extra range on top of guard towers were free? Like, that was seen as very, very good by, like, almost everybody. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Inca change is, like, a very 50-50 thing. Like, people are very strongly for it and against it. And in my mind, I don't differentiate the two. They're pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I'd be interested to hear your take on it. Um, if anything, I'm going to say that the Inca fill rush, because that's mostly what it is, you just have stronger villagers. I think it's even worse than what the uh, Koreans were able to do, which was just... Uh, what, what do you have? They had stronger They're... towers, cheaper towers... They're, they have faster working stone miners. They still have that. They get free mm -hmm. guard tower and keep. Oh, they yeah. still have that. Yeah. They also had extra tower range upon hitting Castle Age. And the big thing that was removed is they had their towers build 33% faster. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which Spanish still have, right, on their towers? Right? Spanish, uh, it was a bonus that was slightly higher than the Spanish bonus. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, it was limited to towers and castles and that stuff. That sounds so toxic. It I'm seems glad. like I wasn't around for <laughs> those days. I think it's just something uh, but more about the community, how the community views these things then, because I think the nerf that they did to Koreans is uh, is not as strong. It was very, very strong for the Koreans, but generally to the game, you still have other civilizations that can do a similar strategy. Um, and, and I think the main argument people had back then versus Koreans is that they did lose their identity, but they more generally were for these nerfs. Um, but I think the, the community views these strategies differently nowadays because maybe because of people popularizing them. I think, was this called, who, who popularized Naburu. this strategy in Inca Rush? T90 was did. T90 did, okay. T90 wow. popularized it. Like, it's oh, called okay. the Noboru Rush because Noboru did it like all day, every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but T90 yeah. popularized okay. it, you know? Okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> so, blame T90, I guess. So I have T90 yeah. to thank for all those Inca games, so, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, 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 I see your point that uh, that community, that, that, uh, that, that how people react to that is definitely different, I agree. Uh, because the, I think the Korean nerf was done during World of Kingdom times, or was it done at the start yeah. of the... At least it was very early in DE, so it was really the core yeah. Community if, if it was around, DE, it was right? very early DE. Yeah, and I think that people do make um, a a good point in in chat and just in general is that Koreans, not immediately, but over time, have received several different changes that made make them, I think, a fairly well rounded civ right now, and they can do a lot of different things. And I think that's where we want to go with Incas. It's just uh, you know we're not. We're still in the uh, okay. We, we removed the really gimmicky thing, but we haven't really given them anything yet. No, yeah, yeah. I I, I agree. Like testing is is and, and balancing is really how they try to do the mm -hmm. to make this game work. And most games are like that, so it's not really. Yeah. No. 
I just don't agree with the fact that they remove strategies, which is basically what they're doing. I think they're removing strong strategies uh, and giving people less options, but more more ones that you can also find in other civilizations. Yeah. That's my main reason not to like it. And I and I and I, yeah, I think retroactively, I would say, yeah, give back Koreans their buff on their towers because oh, no. the what's their, their, their identity? I think it's even set in their tech tree. They're a tower civilization. In AOC, it was. They changed that in DE. Oh, now it's okay. defensive and naval civilization. Oh, okay. Pretty just, sure. just like uh, Sicilians, which... No, no. Sicilians are just civilization. <laughs> it's just oh. a, a blank space and then civilization. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so... I don't know. Like, So what else on just the idea of like the so what what would we say is it's the the devs philosophy right now on on um adjusting the strategy of the sips what would in your opinions what 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 philosophy or or direction are they heading into so i okay go, on, sorry, go, go, go ahead i go okay so I think they're trying to, because I'm going to also say that's the easy way out. They're going to make more civilizations more similar because that is easier to balance because there is less interactions you need to balance because most civilizations will go to the same strategies. Um, and that makes balancing easier. Right, right now, I believe DE is the most balanced Age of Empires has ever been. I, I think most people agree on that, at least for RM. Um, and that is, I think, one of the reasons why they do it like this. Um, and I'm not going to say it's even possible to balance the game otherwise. Like having 30, we're probably going to add two more saves or 39 saves. What's going to be a lot of yep. saves? Um, if they add saves, which they have not confirmed, no, but I assume they will because that's what, why people buy it, at least in our community. Um, it's a safe assumption. Yeah, maybe one to just not make it too many things. That, that, like I have to learn another two civilizations, or have to deal with another two overpowered or underpowered civilizations. But um, let's go back. Um, so I think if we're balancing those many, so many civs and therefore different strategies for those civs is going to be a very monumental task for them to keep doing in the future. Um, so I think that is the reason why they are are are, are going with this strategy. Um, no, I think that's... Yeah. And uh, Arnold, oh, well. you wanted to get some thoughts on this as well? I, I actually disagree. I think that they don't necessarily want them to... all the civs to play out very similarly. One, I think it's just not as good for the game because, you know, variety is the spice of life. Every civilization should feel unique. And a lot of them do feel very unique. Even if you're doing... Like, okay, take... Mongols and Tatars, they're, they're very similar civs, right? They're geographically similar, and they're both Cav Archer civs and all that. You know, Mongols, they have that very early power spike in, you know, with their faster working hunters. And then they have Mangudai and Siege and the, the, you know, Doom late game kills everything. And they don't really have a lot in between. Whereas you have Tatars, which are much more of like a mid game focused uh, civilization that are also that also have a broader tech tree because they have um, hand cannons and bombard towers. So you can have two civilizations that are quite similar, but they have these sorts of you know little bits of nuance and difference that I think that's where you want to have the civilizations. Mm -hmm. I actually think that what you don't want is to have a civ that just feels like a copy of another civ, like say Sicilians, which have no identity right now, and you don't want a civ that is just completely gimmicky and out there like Flemish Revolution with Burgundians. Mm. I think those like both ends of those are quite bad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I do think can I react to this? Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So I, I think uh, I'm really thinking about more strategy, right? This is really the, the things that but but you like and I, I I can understand that you like that. It's really about the subtleties in specific things, which indeed, because it's a complex game, will give you a totally different power spike. It's going to be late or or castle age, um, because of that. And 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 yes, I like that, but I don't think it doesn't really change your main game plan that much. Where you, you know I have to focus here, but it doesn't mean oh I'm going to do something completely different and I'm going to micro my my interaction with the game is going to be completely different, but it's just I'm going to micro my units a bit different because they have different upgrades because my power spike is in castle age. Those are the, the differences. Um, and I 
okay, yes, I, I agree. This Flemish Revolution isn't great to play against either, and I think it's 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 meant to be a more niche play that is not impactful. But I believe people right now are just booming into those two hundred villages, boom into two hundred Flemish militia, and I think we should get rid of that because that's indeed it's it's, it's a different strategy, but. Um, I don't think it, it allows for many counterplays that are different as well. And you just basically when you I think, OK, right now, we're going, you can, I guess, play two things. Either you go fast uh, cavalry into fast paladin or you can do Flemish Revolution. I think those are the two things that people do. Or both. Or both. We can do both. Yeah. Oh, my army died. Let's put pump in a bit more villagers. Yeah. <laughs> or it's like, oh, no, I'm under attack. I don't have an army. Oh, wait, let's just hit the button and then patrol. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think one of those plays, like the the first uh, paladin thing, and the people are somewhat right. Uh, Burgundians are like Franks. They're basically a better Franks or a worse Franks, depending on the current patch that you're on. Um, and then but and then the strategy like Flemish Revolution is a bit over the top. Um, but I do think that's what they tried to do there, but it didn't work out. Like like with tower rushing is a, a, a very specialized strategy, and I think this is what they tried to do there with Flemish Revolution as well. But it should be more niche, and I think it's designed to be more niche. Only if you're really in trouble, oh, I will just do this and see if I will survive this this huge push, rather than hey, hey I, have, I have an army of two hundred units now, and I'm gonna gonna wreck you because I have a big, bigger army. Which I think is what people use it for right now. Yeah. And um, um, so I had a question from the audience here from Zaki, who I've heard both of you mention. Um, and what he or she had to ask was um, if we think it's good to have the uniqueness of the sieves solely removed, and are they making the sieve just a bit too generic? It's a. Uh... It's a fine balance, right? What I think is... So, in general, Age of Empires, the sieves are designed in such a way that they're fairly symmetrical. As in, most sieves share around 80% of the same tech tree. This isn't something like StarCraft, where you have three very distinct races, or WarCraft, where you have four. And this isn't Age of Empires 3, where you have like the sort of like weird hybrid in between sort of thing. And I think that it's a way, way easier to balance a more symmetrical design sort of thing because you can just tweak some numbers and those sorts of things can apply to, you know, everybody at different levels. And if you make the try to make the sieves more unique, you run into and the game just becomes incredibly complicated and overwhelming with AOE three having like 10 bajillion different units that are all very slightly different from one another. And I think that's what you don't want in AOE because then that makes the, it makes somebody who's trying to play the game a lot more overwhelmed, which I don't think they Microsoft wants. And I don't think that's good for newer players. Okay. Uh, AP, any thoughts on that before I move on? Um, not very very strong strongly honestly yeah. um no there's a gonna say no i don't have any thoughts is that a valid answer <laughs> <laughs> no that's fine i don't think right. i think do not remember <laughs> <laughs> no and i had another question here from baby shoes in the twitch chat uh how do you feel about um infinite res mechanics like fitior and flemish revolution and I think we could all imagine what, what the response here would be like. I, I have lots of opinions, so <laughs> go ahead, AP. <laughs> um, well, it, 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 it depends on the map, right? And, and therefore, since if we're not balancing ships, if we don't change ships over maps, it becomes interesting. Uh, for example, the, the hidden cup with the Fatora things it was very boring to watch. I think it's also going to be very boring to play. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I, I I'm not good enough to get oh, in those situations. Back, back when like DE came out and Portuguese got buffed, like that's what I did every single Islands game. I just sat on my butt mm. until I had mm. infinite resources and won. So I yeah. have lots of experience. Yeah. Doing it. So I think I think it's a similar similar thing to, to Flemish Revolution, which is was what they say. Uh, Vineyards, I guess, does it as well to some extent. Um, no, you just you just have one strategy, and and you you if you aim for it, it's it's going to be a very long game, which I don't think is something that you should aim for. I think it should always be a possibility to end the game early, 
Um, you can still do that, but they were just gonna strongly boom. And I think booming should not automatically mean that you uh, will have a very strong uh, army suddenly in case of uh, the other thing, or in the case of, of uh, sorry, in the case of uh, premise revolution, and in the other case uh, where basically you make sure that the enemy does not have any rest left, and then you make army. I think those are not interesting strategies to play yourself, play against, and watch. But I do understand that people do it for their tournament games because there's money on the line and therefore, you, yeah, you can get away with it. Maybe you do like it because apparently you did do it with, with the uh, Ornlu. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm like the anti-fun. Like oh. I, I, my peak AoE experience is like 10 TCs behind five layers of fortified walls. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Arnle, you said you had but, some thoughts, if many thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So when we think of, okay, resources inevitability and map control, right? Those, these things are all sort of linked. In general, you need map control to get more resources. That's, you know, sort of logic. And it's like, okay, well, if you don't have any gold income because you're stuck in your base, that's one way you can lose a game because you just don't have any resources or you don't have any wood lines because your opponents towered all of them or something like that. And that is sort of an important part to make things happen in an Age of Empires game. It, it prevents people from just sitting in their little corners and then not doing anything. Then you have the whole inevitability thing. Now, in Age of Empires, there are very few sources of truly infinite resources. Malay fish traps just got removed, so that's already one of them gone. The big one is relics. Relics give you literally unlimited gold, so long as you have them garrisoned. But to get them, you need to take them which means you can't get them in the early game, and it's not a guarantee by any means. And it's another important way that you can actually break stalemates in late game, because one dude will have more gold than the other, so they can make better units. The problem we run into with Fatorias is that, especially on islands maps, you don't need map control, and there's zero counterplay to it. Because you can just plop a Fatoria in your base. There's no interactivity with your opponent. Their buildings are super big and tanky. And they just give you every single resource forever. And it doesn't matter, especially on water maps, if you have, you know, they're really population inefficient. Because, well, I mean, you're not gathering any other resources because the map doesn't have any resources. And... The fact that you can just get that for yourself without having to interact with your opponent at all is what I think makes it really boring and what makes for all these really campy games. I actually do think there's a difference between Fatorias and Burgundian Vineyards where you can generate gold on your farms because you need to have the farms, you need to have the wood to get the, the food and you need to have the space to build farms. It's something that's kind of underrated if uh, you know, any of you have played like Super Late Game Arabia or really any map, it's like, oh, you need, you need space to build farms. So that is actually a much more limiting factor, and it's more of just a powerful bonus in long games. So I really think that it's pretty unique to old Malay fish traps, but those are now gone, and now it's just really the Fatoria. Okay. Um, so there, there's something I wanted to circle back to, because um, because uh, AP, I think you had mentioned it, it was that, um, you know, the game uh, right now is probably the most balanced it's ever been. Um, now, as a nine-year League of Legends veteran, you know that's a that's a crazy <laughs> statement to me. Like, a uh, game is like balanced, and on the pro players are saying it um, publicly on Twitter. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's a, a lot of um, community disagreement with the devs and a lot of the decisions they've made. So, what's accounting for this? For this um, this riff? On the one hand, we have a balanced game, which is a rare feat in the online multiplayer world. But at the same time, you know, not a lot of respect for a lot of decisions that the dev make. Any one of you, feel free to take that one up. I guess it's my turn. Um, so, so the, the essence of your question, or what you would like to know is, do you think that, um, let me try to rephrase this. Um, to, is it, it basically is it good to have a balanced game? Is that the essence of your question? Well, I guess question? more of um, the 
the feedback from the community doesn't really reflect the fact that the game is is considered to be like yeah. the most balanced it's ever been. Oh. You know, oh. any any change that yeah. devs make is usually met with like strong pushback mm. or just distrust. Mm. Um, like yeah. with this DM thing, it's not so much that people think it's a bad idea per se, but mm. or that they just don't trust that the devs have a viable long term plan for it. Um, mm. and as somebody who's come from online games that are definitely not balanced, mm. like why why is it that you'd have like uh, the success of balance in a game, but like like such a bad reputation of with the community still? Hmm. I can talk mm. if you're still thinking. But... Yeah, I'm not sure if I agree with your statement. That's, oh, that's basically okay, epic. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, I... with your assumptions is what I should say. Yeah, go on. Oh, I was just gonna say. Well, one people are always going to complain. That's just how people are, and it's you know that's whatever. I think what kind of gets lost a lot of the time is that you have a balance update. It has say ten changes. One of them is really controversial, and it gets all the focus. But then the other nine changes quietly do make the game more balanced and better. And that's how you can sort of have this sort of duality of like, oh, like the Inca nerf, like rage, rage, rage. But then you have, you know, a bunch of other small changes that do actually make the game better, more balanced, more dynamic. And it's just that there are those changes that, yes, the devs have made mistakes. They've had really bad changes. We all played uh, post-launch humans. But um, <laughs> I didn't, by the way, but in general we are working towards a more balanced game okay uh apn you had some um disagreement yeah with the statement. so well, well i think I, th I think it's similar to what ono says and that's probably also what what my disagreement is like people um don't necessarily just think something is is unbalanced but i still like to complain about something specifically right now about in right. so i think that's somewhat in disagreement with your assumption that people don't well they don't don't like listen i've been on aoe it. zone my friend okay so, I've, been on, I've been on aoe zone i've i've read the forums yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean at least in my perception yeah yeah, there's... yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I guess people like, maybe maybe that's just it. People like drama, and people want to say. It, it, I guess it's like trolls on the internet. Right. People just like to to interact with something, and and, and the, the worst thing that they think is worst or most controversial, potentially they want to discuss. But it could still be a balanced game because of that, right? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to do with the balance. It has to do with the way they balance something. Which right. I guess this is more balanced for many players. Maybe maybe that's where my disagreement comes from. But um... so you would say that you like, um, you would say that the community isn't so much against the devs that it may, as it may appear. That they kind of trust yeah, them for the I, most part. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think they like regardless of what you do, there will be something that they're gonna complain about right. and. Uh, I don't think. I think if you, think just... if you go past the surface level and you actually talk with somebody about the game's balance for like more than two minutes, they'll <laughs> yeah. almost always come to the opinion. I feel that the game is more balanced than it used to be. Okay, that's interesting. At least any reasonable person. So, so that doesn't exclude like you know half the of AOE zone in the forums, but you know you you do what you can. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, pretty interesting for like new players like me. I've only existed in the in the in this current mecca of. Perfect Balance DE. I wasn't around. <laughs> like I saw um, a little troubled song where she made a song about like mm. the 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 bug that had at launch, and I was like, "Do you guys really played this? This seems so crazy to me. I can't believe you guys stuck in truth." <laughs> you know, so a lot of truth was in the AOE community. Actually, like I have a lot of respect for you guys that just like stuck it out for so long. Um, okay, so now I have to find more things for us to discuss about. It. I I don't know if any of you have. Uh, like had enough of the conversation. We've talk, been talking for like an hour. If you want to stick around, I'll find something. Uh, I can stick around. I'm, I, I should probably know. I'm getting a bit tired, so I, yeah, I will yeah. grab some something to eat or drink. Um, what, what about that's you? That's okay. Yeah, it's fine. What about you on? I know you've been around. It's about like eight hours you've been live on the internet. It's been for... it's been a while. I can stick around a little longer. Okay. So all right, let's take a five minute break then. Take a five minute okay. break. Go get something to eat. Anu, go 
wash your eyes out. Well, it doesn't have to be five for me, but it can just be two or three. Yeah, know, right? same. That's fine. That's fine. Some random just, amount of time. But you chat, think about your chat, man. There yeah. is 120 people in your chat right now. You don't ah, want them they, to wait they're fine. Minutes. They don't. They don't care. Yeah, they, they don't. There listen. you go. That's that's the true streamer spirit. They, uh, these they are people matter. that they're, sit they're through the lobby I'm time. A streamer. I don't know the ethos, man. These are people no. that sit through a DM lobby time waiting for a game to start. Okay, <laughs> they 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 they're battle prepared for this. Mm. Okay, all right. I get out okay. of here. Go, uh, go do something. Go, I'll go, go. be right back. Hey, get out, get out. Oh God! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away. Get away. Get away. All right. Okay, so I guess we're on a break. I should probably get up to myself, but I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave you all alone. I don't know. Oh, somebody just redeemed. Fix it. What's wrong with my posture? I, I, I can't sell up any more than this. Are you, are you wicked, man? Okay, I'm gonna redeem that anyway. So that's a that's a hundred points you just threw away because my posture right now is popping. All right, my back isn't popping, but my posture is popping. How do you get the rewards, dude? Yeah, so I mean, so thanks everyone for tuning in, you know. I really appreciate the support for the series. We're, we're up to like 120 viewers right now. You know, that's crazy. That's good. Um, Somebody 15 days ago told me to hydrate up. Well, I guess I'll just refund them. Can you push your shoulders back? I mean, like, like this? I mean, uh, okay. I know I was just um, digging myself up there, but yeah, I got, I got very bad posture. Yeah, thank you, baby shoes. Listen, I got something spicy for y'all. I got something hot coming for y'all in like uh, 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 two to three weeks. I got a special guest. Um, someone that we all know and love. They haven't confirmed their parents, but they know they're thinking about it. So you know, think things can get juicy. Things can get um uh, pretty pretty interesting. What happened to Anu? I think he went to wash his eyes, or you know, he's been on the internet live for eight hours now. Really like the debate. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate the support. Thanks for tuning in. Um, but I could use some help though. So for the first problem I have is um, I need topic ideas. I got I'm running out of topic ideas. I mean I have like nine here, but you know, a lot of the, a lot of them. Yeah, let's go through the topic ideas. Let me switch over to. A big screen. Okay, well this might this may not make not so much sense because you guys are not gonna be able to read it. Okay, let me just say what the topic idea is, alright? So what so what we got is um best map arena versus Arabia. Um who was the most OP civ? Uh who are the top three players? It's Laming Fair. Top five issues that need to be prioritized and fixed. Uh, arena players, actual clowns. Should the community focus on AOE going forward? AOE two versus AOE three. AOE two versus AOE four. Is live coaching fair? Well, Inca nerf probably. Yeah, I guess we could talk about that again. Is tower range mod good for AOE? I actually have something special about for y'all for the tower range mod as well. I think that should be coming next week. Um. Is the game getting too noob friendly? We actually talked about that a little bit here. And the last one I had is how to solve the old FO issue, which I think we'll be talking now. So I, I have um I think like half of those topics are like bad. Probably nobody would want to talk about them. But I need spicy topics to in, to entice more people to come on and talk, you know. People wanna when people when they wanna hear something spicy, be like, oh I wanna come talk about that. I wanna come argue about that. Uh, which is how I landed on Luana uh, Platypus here, you know, you know. I mean, they couldn't <laughs> stay away from this. It's just too enticing. Half of them are bad or not bad, not enough for a whole conversation. Yeah, that's the thing. It also has to be something that we can, people can actually like, talk for a while about. I mean, some of those you could just kind of settle in like two minutes, right? And then it's not very interesting again. Um, also, like, um, if you all could recommend people to have on the stream as well. You know, I mean, like, if you know a guy who knows a guy, that would be nice to make a contact. I mean, there are a lot of, like, hidden gems in the AOE. Like, uh, Abruptive Platypus, you know, only a handful of people in the community, you know, really know his name. And look, he's been and such an excellent guest so far. You know, so if somebody didn't uh, recommend Abruptive Platypus to me, we would never get to see his beautiful bed on stream. You know, somebody complimented your bed when the stream started, by the way. Abducted. 
I don't know if you can hear it. Complimented me? Yeah, they complimented me. Yeah, I can hear me. you. Yeah, a compliment for me. Yeah, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, it's, if it's a compliment, it's probably directed at you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I think you've been doing very oh, well. Oh, and uh, uh, I'm getting rated the... by um, AOC Daniel with 197. Danny thank boy. you very much. Oh. Appreciate it. Wow. My bad. Listen. The American hope. <laughs> <laughs> I think this means that Daniel wants to come on the show. <laughs> I, I think that I think Daniel is just saying here, hey, nice show, guys. I I want to be on here next week or maybe the week after. So we'll 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 talk about that, you know, some other time. But thanks for thanks for stopping by. Um. Okay. So we should probably now that we have more viewers here as well, we should probably get back into the show. So for everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. We just finished discussing, um, you know, broad discussions about. Do we have more to talk about the news, by the way? And the uh, the design philosophy of the game. I don't know if you guys had any more um, ideas that you wanted to share. Because I mean, at this point, you know, um, we could just get into this discussions and how we feel about things. You know. Uh, were we, weren't we going to do Alt F fours? Oh, Arnold mm -hmm. sounds like he wants. Uh, that's he sounds like he wants <laughs> to get into that, which is good. I oh, I, I just uh, I think that was like the other like big topic, and I probably only have like another twenty minutes or so. Okay. All right, so that's uh, good. We will go straight into topic number three. So let me just fix my stream here. How to solve the alt? Is that how you want to phrase this? How to solve the alt for issues? Are you guys want to take the mental well, of? Um, we kind of agree uh, on, on that. It's um, a problem, right? Who doesn't yes. agree on it? Uh, right, okay, okay so yeah, like alt for is a problem, but it, there are probably different um, solutions that we would disagree on because there there is no there is no correct answer if there was we would have done it by now <laughs> all right well okay well let's go then um who wants to open maybe ap you open since i don't open the last one okay you know um talk about what do you think the so, issue is and how you what do you think you are the best ways to solve it okay so i think we have a few options um we can punish people for doing it like if you're all the four, you can to some extent um, detect it. It could be for a different reason, by the way. You can also at all the four because you want to quit a game. You are done with the lobby, and suddenly, in the same moment, you find the thing. You're not dodging a map, right? That's the underlying thing. But I think we can just we can still punish them if they do a repeat offense because if people have a repeat behavior, you could just straight out punish them regardless of the reason why, because you're still impacting the uh, the fun for uh, other people that are queuing. Um, we can also look more specifically at the map dodging, which I think is the reason why people alt F4. Um, and, and I think uh, one of the most suggested things, and <laughs> I know that you want to suggest it, uh, Orno, uh, is um, to have people have more bands. Um, I think that, well, A, it's technically not possible because I believe that they first match people together and then see what the overlap is of the maps that did not ban. Therefore, there should always be a guaranteed one map that's not banned by both sides. That is solvable by first having people ban and only match the people with the same map reference. That's, that's the solution you could go for. The downside of that is that you create an ELO, uh, disconnecting ELO. So people that only want to play Arena, only play Arena. People that only want to play Arabia, only play, play Arabia. But they are still the same letter and they still use the same thing, a same matchmaking system, it does mean that, for example, if there's a lot of people that uh, win a lot of arena games and they will be number one, even though that's not the best player. So um, I will keep it here because I know, I kind of okay. know what you want to suggest there, which I think you can do, uh, Arno. Yeah, so I, I think that it's correct to correlate the, the Alt F4 thing with how we play maps in ranked because i will admit i alt f forward once in my aoe career and i felt bad because i realized i didn't uh turn on small trees and i realized that as the game was starting i'm like i don't want to deal with this and i alt f forward but i feel like you know that's like a one-off thing um i feel like you buy the video game you buy aoe 2 you want to play aoe 2 the way you want to play the game you don't want to have to do something you don't want to in a game that you're already, you know, giving your time and money to, you know, play. It's it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. But 
the way that it's done right now is that oftentimes you're making you're forcing people to play something they don't want to play. And can you really blame them for not wanting to play something they don't want to play? I think you should be encouraging people to try new game modes, but I don't think you should necessarily be forcing them to do so. And there are several different ways you can go about that. But I think that it's very odd that we have this sort of full compromise system right now. Like, you know, the system that makes nobody happy, but, you know, everyone can sort of kind of live with. I feel like it's odd that we don't have, say, BF4v4 matchmaking or, you know, Green Arabia, because those are like the game modes that are the most popular for casual people, you know, especially back in the day. And you're not even letting people, you know, do that. So it's, I just find that very odd. Um, yeah, so my response to that is got to be very similar to the problems that DM currently face. Don't you make very small segments of people that are then competing for and, and queuing for a very small thing, and therefore you will have reintroduced the problem with DM, which I know some people think that's fine, fine to keep the letter for DM as, as it is right now. Um, but you will still have very long queue times and a letter that only has a few people and uh, you will be matched therefore with people with way higher ELO than you on that specific map. Um, oh, come on. I've run into MBL on the ladder in Dota <laughs> yeah, in yeah, the yeah. current yeah. system. Yikes. I guess that's, that's, that's the blessing of being those. bad at a game. You're still in the regions where there's a lot of people queuing at your, your ELO. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I, 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 I get your point. It, it happens regardless, but I do think that that will definitely make that a problem for lower level players. And I think that will also give you another, another problem that DM has. People that uh, are the first first time queuing for the specific game mode, in case of DM or map, uh, are then discouraged to play more because they will not get a fun match to play. They just get stomped completely or the other side, they have no fun because there is you, you, you already know you're going to win because the opponent is not very strong at the map. Um, and, and that's going to be the downside of introducing very specific map uh, map letters, I think is what you suggested there. I um, That's actually not quite what I suggest, or I would suggest. Okay. Because I, I, I think you're, I, I find your arguments very compelling. Um, <laughs> well, I think well. that AoE has existed on lobbies for a very, very long time. Is it to the point when we can create a ranked queue that can sort of work? Yes. Is it large enough that we can cater to everybody, to all the different ways that we play this game? And this is kind of a uniquely AOE thing, right? There, there aren't, there aren't like a ton of different ways to play StarCraft. At least not that I remember. Um, you know, everyone just does like one v ones. But that's like what's special about Age of Empires. Like you can play four v four BF or one v one Arabia and have two totally different experiences. And just especially for the smaller communities, just let lobbies have ranked. Let lobbies affect ranked points. Because people like competing over internet points. It's why they play competitive ranked games. And especially for those smaller communities, especially if you create some easier way to facilitate the lobbies or like, I don't know, improve the lobby system in general so you can do things like sort by ELO or like not have games randomly disappear or old games appear, but those are different issues. But that's that's personally what I think would be probably the best way of going about it. Yeah, yeah I I, I, I agree to, to at least the extent for Deathmatch. I think for Deathmatch, it's, it makes a lot of sense if, if you're going to remove them from the, the, mm -hmm. the ranked queue that indeed you will still keep some, some matchmaking uh, from ELO or, or MMR around um, to just give people an indicator of how good, how strong are they and still have like a, a, a little letter there. So you at least can self-organize um, having a good matchup. I think that's what you should do. And I think Age of Empires is a so complex game and I agree it's very unique to Age of Empires because small changes in settings like Black Forest or Arabia completely change how strong you are on that setting. Um, okay. So I um, think what I'm hearing. Oh, you had more to say, AP? Well, well, this could be the end of it, I guess. Because I think we yeah. can make the line further in the two, two maps. But I think it will make give us too many letters. That's basically what I want yeah. to say afterwards. So I think There's what I, yeah. So I think what I was hearing is that um, 
it sounds like the rank system that uh, the devs have set up, like you guys think that it should kind of be recalled in a way. Um, cause Onlu mentioned, sorry, Onlu mentioned, um, just have lobbies, um, give you points, and you kind of agree to that a bit. Uh, well, AP, would you say you you agree to like that specific idea of you know perhaps, um, letting people pick their matches and just letting those matches count for points? Um, yes, but for a different letter, so it should be a disconnected thing, and I think. What automatically will happen is that if you would, assuming you would keep the current system in place for RM, that that will be the more prestigious letter thing. For which, by the way, you also have to get rid of Smurfs. But uh, and the other things are more small, smaller letters that are more for fun, but and more with the goal not to have a com competition, which doesn't have necessarily need to be there for the matchmaking system for the matchmaking letter. I think either. But really, the, the goal of the lobby rankings is going to be to know how strong your opponent is and you can make fair games. Because that's, in the end, what people are playing the game for, is to have fun games. They don't have too much time. They just want to play a few games that they like, which I think is also what Ornu was saying as in favor of, of doing this. Um, and then, then still give people the, the more competitive, so we should really call it then, uh, competitive rather than ranked i think it's called right now it's really a competitive mode where you really try to to aim for a high a high level um on that ladder i think that could be two different goals for those two different systems right. that you could aim for for me personally i don't think i would i would I would still use the competitive mode to, to get a quick matchmaking because it's probably still going to be the fastest way for me to get a fun game but if i want to improve like i want to get 1600 which for me is very high, by the way. Sorry, Chet. Um, <laughs> then, yeah, then I will, will indeed start to to really be, be also play a game more competitively. Um, and, and maybe there is it's also valid to say, hey, you get punished for not not having sports like behavior because there is a different different rule set around that. Um, but that's maybe. Too far in the future. If it's ever going to happen, then that's still a question whether how you would want to present it to the people. Okay, and um, so I have an audience question here from Zaki again. Um, thank you, Zaki, for the questions, by the way. Um, for both of you, do you think the TG ranking system should be overhauled since it has the most issues with Alt F4 and inflammation? I've seen a lot of nuts, nuts here. <laughs> since since it has the most issues with alt f4 and inflammation of scale gaps the most so the way that the the team game ladder works right now it has issues that actually were rooted in a bug that existed when de came out which caused there to be like okay so normally in the ranked ladder it should be the net points should be pretty much the same if not exactly the same Inflammation? Yes, inflammation. It's like, you know, you have allergies now. <laughs> Inflation! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've been online for a long time, guys. <laughs> um, no, no, I had said inflammation, because Zaki had said it in the, the thing. So uh, blame Zaki for this one, don't worry. Okay, but uh, whatever. Um, you had the situation where people were just rocketing up in the, the team game ladder, and it takes so long to climb. Like, my team game win rate is like, I have like, what, 250-ish games and have like a 80% win rate? Like, and that's just because it takes so long to get anywhere. But that's because, you know, like they, they sort of fixed that issue. But now there's still this massive gap in terms of, okay, you start at 1,000, theoretically. And to get to like where you would, the relative skill level where you would find a, a balanced game at like, where I am, like around 1,700 1v1, to get to like 2,600, 2,700 team game, like that takes so many games, and that can lead to a lot of really imbalanced games along the way, especially when you get like four points a win. And the other issue is that the problem becomes larger in team games because I feel like in team games, people want to play even, an even more specific map pool. Like when people want to play BF team games, they want to play BF team games. They want to play Nomad team games, Arabia. And the they're more reluctant in general to play other maps. 
Okay. Uh, AP, any thoughts you have on the TG um, um, ladder and how it affects all that for? Well, I don't have an S strong uh, explanation as Orno just, just had. Um, but I think generally um, the way that team games are handled in the game, the, the fact that they're attached to 1v1 ELO and the fact that it even attached to deathmatch ELO is a huge problem. And I think that um, this has, has an influence over one people all to four as well in the sense that uh, people know what kind of what kinds of elos like certain maps and would and, and you have a if you're a very low elo in one v one and you're gonna play a complex map then you're more likely to want to tap out of that um, and it's gonna harm people because there will be different skill levels one v one skill levels at the same team team elo um, yeah and I just so, like the for the like I queued up for TGs yesterday. Um, so seven minutes in, uh, we get a re arena. Somebody alts f fours. Five minutes in after yeah. that, we get Arabia. Somebody alts f fours. Six minutes after that, we get Black Forest. Somebody alts f fours. So now I'm trying to figure out like, what are the maps people actually want to play at TG? I think I'm like twenty two hundred, which is probably like the median. That's probably the median mm -hmm. point for TGs right now. Um, what is it about TGs? Like, what, what do, do you guys like know what people want out of TGs, or is there just like nobody really knows what they want, or it's just like bringing everybody's competing interests together just is not working out? I think people want very specific things in, in team games because the difference between playing like even like a 1v1 on a hybrid, like any hybrid map, is not as different as playing a team game on like pure arabia versus a hybrid map and yes team game elo does influence rm and vice versa it's very very odd um but generally speaking in team games people want to play one of arabia arena a little bit but black forest there's some overlap but definitely black forest arabia black forest nomad slash mega random i guess and then there's like everything else but like those ones specifically are like people want to play those specific things in team games. Okay, um, so I had another question here from Noob Master, and I I know we've kind of touched on this before, but maybe you have like a condensed explanation. Because I know some people are wondering this in the chat, like what do you believe that the root cause of the Alt F four issue is? If you just want to briefly just say, from your observations, what what's been going on with this? I think we kind of already discussed it. It's purely the fact that people get to play maps they don't want to play. I think that's the main 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 reason why they, why they do it, and that's that's because of the system that we currently have for matchmaking. Um, as I discussed, you get matched with the players, and then you match, then you they figure out which map doesn't overlap, and you only have so many bands. Especially if you queue as a single person for GGs, you can only ban one map, and you don't want to play half of them. Yeah, but that's that's a side effect of the system they've implemented, um, yeah. and it's hard to solve properly, I think. So, I think well, I mean, we've had a good discussion so far, and I, I think I'm looking to wrap up, unless um, either of you had something else you wanted to mention about this particular topic or anything similar to it. But if not, mm -hmm. I know Anu looks like he's about to. Just drop and uh, drop and fall apart, yeah. So we should probably let him go before he turns into a zombie as well. I would like to have a meal today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so I would like to thank um, Onlu and Abductic Platypus for joining us on the program. I think we've had a fruitful discussion, and this has been. Yeah, thank you for having. Me. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. It, yes, uh, it was. A really great discussion. So thanks, AP, for that. And uh, it was a great forum. And uh, thanks for moderating it. Yeah, thank you very much. So yeah. I'd like yeah, to have you both uh, back was, on the show. It was a pleasure to... Uh, oh, sorry. I don't want to no, talk no, about I, you. I'm always, I'm always willing to hear some praise, AP. You don't have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Phil, thank you, Arlo, for, for this discussion. It's been great to have someone who is known and also has shown to have so much game knowledge uh, to have the to discuss well, yes yes game um, knowledge game skill i guess we can separate those things <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's great to have, have a discussion like that with someone like you it's uh, a pleasure thank you 
yeah okay so and with that we're gonna close off today's episode of strategy talk um i said once again thank you both to the guests and i think i definitely want to have you back on the program and i think the audience as well uh, definitely wants to see you back and return and talk more aoe also as well um i'd like to interview each of you you know just to you know just some i i because tomorrow i'm doing an interview with little trouble uh, so i hope you guys tune in for that and of course i know the chat is going to want to hear a bit more about both of you and especially uh dr platypus who is uh, you know a, a, a hidden gem of the community that now everybody is getting a bit more acquainted with and for the chat and those viewing at home um thank you for tuning in and you know, as i develop the series um i'm definitely gonna need some support we, we need um ideas for guests um you know there are a lot of people in the AOE community that i don't personally know because i'm new here i've only been around for a year as i repeatedly say in each episode and also as well you know just ideas for topics and if anybody wants to help out on the series there you know many different things that um i can use or have i have to do everything by myself for now um okay and with that i'm just gonna officially end i don't have a magic button here to click i'm not gonna click end stream <laughs>